ever since the 16th century Protestant Reformation, the Bible has a unique role to play among all believers. The Bible has become the source of inspiration and theological knowledge for all Christians ever since the 16th century. It is a non-negotiable source of Christian doctrine. The Bible comforts the afflicted we have learned and afflicts those who are comfortable. For African pro Protestant Christians, the Bible is more than a source of Christian authority and inspiration. It is also a book of remembrance. It is a companion for Christian scholarship, but the stories we read in the Old Testament especially are also the African stories. Many Protestant Christians in Africa continue to see the Bible as a source of inspiration and they connect with the Bible directly. So the Bible is more than a book we make references to for worship and direction in theological education. It is also for us a book of remembrance. The Bible is a collection of stories that we remember. The purpose of our discussion today is to have this wonderful dialogue titled Mission Spiritualities in a Time of Global Trauma. And I'm delighted and honored to join my colleague, uh, Professor Dana Robert. During a time of trauma, the Bible is an instruction manual as well as inspiration. And let me tell you a dramatic story from the book of Numbers, from chapter 11. The Israelites were in a traumatic situation. They just left Egypt after slavery, and not too long later, they started complaining. So let's listen to some of their voices as they complained to Moses in the wilderness. If only we had food to eat, we remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing. The cucumbers, the melon, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. But now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Then Moses carried the complaints of the people of God to God, saying, I am not able to carry all these people alone, for they are too heavy for me, O God. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. Then God responded, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them, bring them to the tent meeting and have them take their place there with you. I will come down to talk with you there and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. And they, that is the elders, shall carry the burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all by yourself. Then people responded, Why did we ever leave Egypt? Then Moses cried out to God, There are 600,000 of them on foot. How am I going to feed them? Then God responded, Is the Lord's power limited? And look at God's, act, God's action. Spirit was on the 70 elders, and when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied. Then this is the trauma. Two men remain in the camp, their names Eldad and Medad. The Spirit rested up upon them too. They were the rebels in the camp. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out of the tent as God requested them to do. And so they prophesied inside the camp. 
A young man ran and told Moses out of frustration because of this trauma. Eldad and Medad are also prophesying inside the camp. Should I stop them? Then Joshua reacted. Let's see what Moses, our meek leader, will say. Joshua, the military assistant to Moses, said to Moses, My Lord, stop them. Stop Eldad. Stop Medad. Then Moses responded, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord will put his spirit on them. The rebels as well as the congregation can prophesy. During a time of trauma, nothing frightens humanity more than the discovery that we are all equal before God. Nothing frightens humanity than the radical sameness of unity and that our, our equality before God is complete. We desire to be special. We want to be treated differently, but we are frightened that we are the same. In this age of global trauma, of specialization, of sealing the borders, of guiding the borders, of transnational mobility, new possibilities exist by faith that we are equal before God. We cannot solve global trauma alone. We have to cooperate with each other. Therefore, only the humble will see God, and only through unity we can see God's re redemption together as members of God's family. Therefore, every single one of us in Christ is called to be missionary. Christ calls us to give to the world precisely who we are. The ministry of touching the lives of others belongs to all of us. There is no expertise, no permanent gatekeepers, and no final geography or final history. No special resources, no special skills. The mission spirituality in a time of trauma means that you have a unique way of saying the name of Jesus in a global traumatic condition that only your life can say. Thank you to Professor Oladipo for exploring the Hebrew Bible as a Protestant resource in times of trauma. I'd like to add to his reflection by saying a bit about the book of John as the source of ideas in, of spirituality and mission in time of trauma. As Jesus prepared to die, he spoke to his friends. At the Last Supper, he said, a new command I give you, love one another. As I've loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, we often forget that Jesus spoke these words in a time of trauma. He was about to be captured, tortured, and executed. And he talked about friendship. And so in the time of trauma in which we find ourselves, Jesus's command in treaty to his disciples was to remain faithful to each other and to love one another and this rings true as we are all separated from each other now by pandemic and other crises. The theme of remaining starts at the very beginning of the book of John. When Jesus calls his disciples, it says in John 1, 38, 39, Jesus turned and saw them following. He said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. So when the disciples met Jesus, he asked them what they were looking for. And thus we have the first step in friendship. 
keeping eyes and heart open to others and asking what they need. In our world of trauma and suffering, it's easier to ignore others' needs because our needs are so great. Yet Jesus reached out to them. The two men asked, where was he staying? And Jesus invited them in. Now, in their quest for something new and fulfilling, in the quest for purpose in their lives, they met Jesus. And the first thing they did is to put down roots. They spent time with him. They located themselves in relationship. Their first task was to get to know him and to share him with each other. So the patience of remaining grounded their friendship. In a time of trauma, when people are suffering and hurting and separated from each other, we need to be asking each other, what are you looking for? And where are you staying? Although we often think of mission as movement, as being sent, and perhaps as going from place to place, the most meaningful stories of mission show that the most important thing to do is not to run to and fro, but to decide where you belong, where God is calling you, and to remain there. Grounded in Christ, sharing with people where they are. The Christian vocation does not consist of one exciting immersion experience after another. It lies in remaining in community, in solidarity with specific concrete persons, and loving them the way that Jesus did from John 1, when he calls the disciples, to the end of his life, when his last words are to his friends when he tells them to love each other. We must ask people where they are staying and remain with them in a spirit of love. Now, this idea of remaining is holistic. It has spiritual and physical meanings. We can see the spiritual meaning of Jesus being fully present to his disciples. It also is a matter, though, I think, of psychological solidarity with humanity. To follow Jesus in this way means committing ourselves to concrete relationships, to abiding in the vine, to sticking it out together through trauma. Just as the love of Jesus is both intimate and constant, Friendship as remaining requires rootedness, and it is a long-term, not a short-term mentality. It requires accountability to each other, this idea of remaining and of, as a grounding for friendship in Christ. Remaining means being present in solidarity, and I believe it's a mustard seed practice. It's a sign of the kingdom that can start small, is often hidden and unseen, yet can grow over time and feed all around it with the richness of the branches that are the, of the tree of life that can support abundant life. And... I love to find stories in history about this kind of remaining with each other, especially across cultural boundaries and political boundaries and ethnic boundaries and gender boundaries. If we just look, we see these narratives of grace that are throughout our history and, and in time of trauma, we can cling to these and connect them to our, the Bible as a resource for our own um, spiritual grounding. So at this point in time, I'd like to be able to ask uh, Professor Oladipo a question or two just to keep our, just to launch our conversation a little bit. The radical equality, the spiritual equality that you're, you're talking about, that you exegeted from that, that marvelous text, also involved 
prophecy in time of trauma. And there can be a, and, and you, that story is brilliant because it shows the tensions there. There's the infighting, the need for cooperation, but prophecy is, is happening. And, and you conclude that hum, humility is, is needed. Could you say a little bit more about how we, how we pursue that kind of humility in the midst of the dissension that we have, especially in times of trauma? Oh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Robert. Um, what I was trying to see here is that um, Moses, in, in his insight, waited on God and carried the burden of the people in traumatic situation before God in humility because he knew that he didn't have all the expertise that would allow him to unite the people. And the irony of it was that they had rebel in the midst, like uh, Eldad and Medad, but still he was able to unite them because of that voice of prophecy. And what you have also said earlier on in terms of remaining uh, also resonates in this story as well because, because Moses remained in the wilderness with the people in traumatic situation and he was able to attend to their needs by remaining with them. He was not going in different directions and um, he was not obeying the voice of people who are very distracting, who, who are distracting him that, oh, you should do this or you should do that. As like like uh, Joshua, but he remained with the people, and the voice of prophecy ultimately prevailed. But I think what is so important here is to see the humility of Moses to gather together the people of God so that they can remain during this traumatic situation to see the will of God. And I think, you know, you can also speak to uh, the, 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 the way I see Jesus Christ in the New Testament connecting with this story in the Old Testament. I see, I see a, a sense of connection in there. And uh, maybe you want to speak, uh, you know, uh, to that connection. I do not know. But, but I, as you are speaking, uh, it really touched me to see, you know, when you mentioned that Mission actually begins where we are. You really do not need to, uh, you know, you doesn't have to be geography. You don't need to necessarily go from one place to another, especially during this time of pandemic. God is asking us to remain, to be useful, to be united, and to listen to our voices. So maybe you want to speak more about that. Well, it strikes me how much this is a gift of grace. The <laughs> whole idea of Emmanuel, mm -hmm. God with us, is the foundation of all of this. The friendships that Jesus talked about and the prophesying convictions that Moses had, these were gifts of the Spirit that allowed the humble human to remain in solidarity with each other despite their obvious dissension, disagreements, and infighting in times of trauma. And of course, the disciples were themselves splintered after Jesus' death. Not, they, they couldn't even stand to be at the cross out of fear mm -hmm. and, and hiding. So ultimately, this kind of remaining, it's a gift of God's grace. And I think by seeing these things in the scripture, we as Christians can speak to each other through how we see ourselves in these stories and what they, what they mean to us across cultural boundaries. I, I'm struck by how, how much... Um, in the time of World War II, 
that Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote about the life together that he felt with the seminarians on the run. Mm. And he spoke of the great gift of community and how you don't know it's how much you need it until it's missing. Mm. And, and I think that that's an experience we're having now. We're missing something. And, and, it, and it gives me courage to see your face today and to see <laughs> us both turning to the scripture as a resource for our spiritual journey together. Exactly, exactly. And I'm so grateful uh, to you, uh, Professor Robert, uh, for this wonderful engagement. I've learned a lot uh, from you, and this afternoon is no exception. And I'm just very grateful that, that we can see how Moses, in a way, is connected to Jesus. <laughs> uh, because because both, both events were traumatic. But, yeah. but, but Moses handled it exactly the way Jesus Christ handled it in the New Testament among the disciples, by remaining. And I just like that sense of focus. And it's because of humility. And I think Christ is also incarnational in that way. Right. So that, that is so beautiful. So, so I guess our, our final words for this session on Protestant spirituality in time of trauma is God is with us. Mm, and I'll, I'll let that be our last, last word. Amen to that. That is, that is so powerful. That is so appropriate for this session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.